Hi everybody, Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon now focusing my practice on longevity and bone health. Have you been diagnosed with osteoporosis and osteopenia and you've been wondering about this supplement called Strontium? There is more debate about Strontium, I think, than any other supplement on the market for bone health. And I wanna shed a little light on this topic because I see a lot of confusion between the drug that's not available in the United States, only available in Europe, and not very common anymore because of the risky side effects, and the supplement, which is available over the counter in the United States. The problem that I see is that the people that like the supplement will use the literature from the drugs to support the use of it, whereas the people that don't like the supplement will use the literature from the drugs to say that it has all those risks of the drugs. The truth is that both groups are actually making the same mistake, which is we should not extrapolate a study for a drug that has a different component to it than the supplement that has the same name. So there are two studies that are on humans that do use the supplement that is available in the United States. I wanna talk about those two studies and how I think strontium potentially could be used, but you do have to use it in a certain way and be careful to avoid some of the potential, not really risks, but side effects of using this supplement. So stay tuned. All right, so what is strontium? So strontium is actually an element. It is on the periodic table of the elements. So it is a completely natural thing. If you look at where it is on the periodic table of the elements, you can see that it sits right below calcium. So it is in the same group as calcium. It sits right below calcium and your body absorbs it and can utilize it in a similar way to calcium. The difference is, is that it is relatively rare in the world and relatively rare in your body, whereas calcium is obviously very dominant from, as a mineral in your body. And so we wanna make sure that we preserve that ratio, but strontium is a naturally occurring element and your body can utilize it and does naturally utilize it as part of your bone composition. So as I mentioned before, there are two forms of strontium available throughout the world. In Europe, there is a drug called strontium ranolate. That's the generic form. The brand name in Europe was Proteolos or Osseor. Now these have been removed from the market because of the potential risks that came along with this drug. Those risks, as it turned out over time, was an increase in blood clots, an increase in the risk of heart attack, and the increase in the risk of severe skin side effects. So obviously, a drug that had to be pulled from the market because the benefit of the drug did not outweigh the risks of the drug. And honestly, the benefit was relatively modest anyway, as far as reducing fractures, which is ultimately what we care about. It did have a significant impact though on DEXA, and we'll talk a little bit about why that was the case. Now compare that to strontium citrate. So strontium citrate is the natural form of strontium. It is a salt which you have to take it in as such so that it can then get incorporated into your body. Your body can then use it and put it into the hydroxyapatite, which is also where it stores your calcium in the bones. Now here's the thing. The difference between these two is that strontium citrate is a completely natural product. Your body understands it, knows what to do with it. Strontium ranolate is a synthetic product. The last part of that is a completely synthetic thing that your body does not know what it is. It does not know what to do with it. And it has a very long half-life. So it's good from a drug perspective because you don't have to take it very often, but it's bad because your body can't get rid of it very easily. And as we learned over time, there were significant side effects as a result of that. But those side effects were the result of the synthetic part, probably, not necessarily the strontium. Because again, strontium is natural, your body is used to it, it just depends on how it's getting it, how much it's getting, and what it's gonna do with it. So as I mentioned, there are people that are advocates for taking strontium that will then use the literature that has been published on the drug form from Europe, and they'll say that strontium has this ability to make this improvement in your body. The problem with that is, is those same authors, and this is in, in papers and in, in books, those same authors will then use the risks of the drug to say you shouldn't take the drug, but you should take the, the natural form, strontium. And then they'll use citations, they'll citate the papers, all those papers are on the drugs. I really think that it's dangerous to do because they are not the same thing, and those authors are cherry picking the data that they want, and they're ignoring the rest. So 
Fortunately, since some of these books have been written, there have been some studies that have utilized strontium citrate in combination with other micronutrients, not individually, but in combination with other micronutrients and showing these in humans, not large trials, but reasonably sized trials in placebo controlled methods. So we do now have some literature and I wanna go through that with you. All right, now the first study is from 2012. So yes, that's actually 11 years ago now. So the, this study was called the COMB study, C-O-M-B study, and they used a protocol of micronutrients that included strontium citrate. Now that protocol of micronutrients included DHA specifically as a, an omega-3 at 250 milligrams a day, vitamin D3 at 2000 international units a day, vitamin K2 in the MK7 form at 100 micrograms per day, strontium citrate at 680 milligrams per day, magnesium, a tiny dose of 25 milligrams per day. And then they recommended people to get dietary calcium and to do impact exercise. Now this study had a duration of 12 months and they actually did look at bone mineral density. So they did DEXA on these patients and there were 77 women and actually a couple of men in this study, which makes it relatively unique. Now, one of the weaknesses is that not all of these patients had osteoporosis. Some did, but it was not an exclusion or inclusion criteria. They simply enrolled all the patients and then they measured their bone mineral density. So some had osteoporosis, some had osteopenia, some had normal bone mineral density. It's still relevant because it's helpful to know what this is gonna do really in everybody. So what they found is that the bone mineral density in the spine and in the hip, most notably actually in the hip, increased significantly compared to the placebo. So it actually went up between 4% and up to 10% in the men in the spine, which is a remarkable improvement. And they go through this in the study of comparing this to two bisphosphonates and the actual drug, strontium ranolate. Compared to all three of those, there is a much bigger difference in using this micronutrient with strontium protocol rather than the pharmaceuticals regarding bone mineral density and there were no fractures in either group all right now the second study i want to talk to you about is from 2017 so much newer and this study has the acronym m-o-t-s and it stands for melatonin micronutrients osteopenia treatment study m-o-t-s now, what I like about this study is they take this idea of kind of a combination of micronutrients, but they go a step further and they look really in depth at not only DEXA, bone mineral density, they also look at bone turnover markers, they look at osteoblast and osteoclast cells in the lab to see what this combination of things is doing to these cells. So some really cool information here. Okay, so again, this was a placebo trial. So there was an intervention group and then there was a placebo group and it went for 12 months. So a pretty well-designed study. Now, what I liked about this study is it's a similar combination of micronutrients as the other study, but they didn't include DHA, but they did include melatonin. So again, two things that are associated with bone health positively. So you could consider potentially either of them or both of them, depending on what your goals are. Um, so this study after 12 months also saw a significant increase in bone mineral density compared to placebo. Now, not quite as substantial. That 10% improvement is pretty rare to see in a study, even with pharmaceuticals, but definitely with nutraceuticals as in the last, but still up to 4.3% improvement in the intervention group in the spine and a little over 2% improvement in 12 months in the hip. Um, and the placebo groups both had loss of bone mineral density as you would expect. Now, from a basic science perspective, what they showed is that this combination of micronutrients also increased the P1NP, which you may have heard me talk about before uh, in our, our lab video. But basically, this P1NP is a, a biomarker for osteoblast or the bone building cell function. So as P1NP goes up, it means that you're building more bone. So this combination of micronutrients helped to build bone very clearly on blood labs, and these were done at six month intervals. Now, what it didn't do is it did not bring down the CTX, which is another biomarker that we use. CTX helps to show osteoclast function, meaning the, the cells that break down bone, how are they functioning? And you would want, if you had a comprehensive program, for your CTX to come down. And this combination of macronutrients did not bring down the CTX, but they did build up the P1 and P. And when they looked at this, in the, the lab in a petri dish with the cells, 
they showed that you actually do see osteoblasts functioning better. You're making more osteoblasts, but osteoclasts didn't have as significant of an impact. So that is then supported through the biomarkers and ultimately through the DEXA. Now, the last thing I'll mention is that they were also able to show that the mechanism in which this was all happening is through this thing called rank or rank ligand. So I won't go into all of the details here, but there is a very popular drug called denosumab or Prolia. Prolia works through inhibiting rank ligand, and that's actually the same mechanism that this combination of micronutrients worked through. So you are using a natural way to produce the same outcome as this very popular drug Prolia, but clearly without all of the potential side effects. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt. If you are enjoying this content, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications when new videos are available. If you know anybody that would benefit from this, please, share this with them so that they can continue on their own bone health journey. And lastly, if you want to learn more about how we manage bone health or other tips and tricks that you can do on your own, look in the description below for our free masterclass. All right, so based off of that research, it sounds convincing that I should be telling my patients to take strontium. And if any of my patients are watching this, we know that we have some patients that are on it and some patients that aren't. Because when it comes to whether or not you should take this, there is some decision making to be made. I will say that the research is not convincing that the strontium is causing those significant improvements with the micronutrients. It could be the combination of the others together. There is no comparison of that same study without the strontium in it. So we really don't know that the strontium is having that effect. And I would also say that there are some things you really need to consider when you're going to consume the strontium and we'll go through those. So when I tell my patients to take strontium, when they are on that supplementation, that nutraceutical, I have them take it at a separate time, then they're taking their calcium. And of course, I'm encouraging them to get calcium through food whenever possible. So they may not even be on a calcium supplement in the first place. So the, the next concern with strontium is it is going to make your DEXA look a little bit worse. And the reason why I use quotes is that what people are talking about here is that if we go back to that very first picture of the, the periodic table of the elements, and you can see that strontium again is listed below calcium. And if you look at the atomic number, which is in the, the corner, that atomic number shows how heavy it is from an elemental perspective. The heavier something is, the more radiation or the more of the x-ray it can actually bounce back at the machine. And that's what a DEXA is, is actually measuring. So if you have a heavier atomic number element and you are replacing calcium for that element, then you are going to have what looks like a more dense bone, even though it's not actually more dense with calcium. And so that's a whole lot of mumbo jumbo to say your DEXA is going to look denser than it would if you weren't taking strontium. So you could argue that if DEXA was the only tool that we had and if DEXA was all that we cared about, then yes, you are going to falsely elevate your DEXA. However, I don't think that that's really fair because DEXA is not a great study in the first place. And we really should be looking at other biomarkers. We should be looking at bone turnover markers. We should be looking at bone quality imaging like REMS, and we should be understanding you know, what's happening with our bones, not just what's happening with the density and the, the amount of calcium and other nutrients that are in our bones. We wanna know more. So I do think it's probably relevant if you are really leaning on DEXA and DEXA is very important to you, just understand that strontium is going to make it go up faster. You are going to see faster improvements, and some would say that's false. I would argue that's just it's just what you're doing, it's what you're taking. So I don't think it's necessarily bad, but I do think you have to understand what the implications are of what you're taking. So should everybody be taking strontium? Well, all I can say is what I tell my patients, which is that some people take it and some people don't. It makes it into some people's recommendations, but not everybody wants to take it. And I don't know that it's really necessary, but there is compelling evidence to say that it can support particularly bone growth, which is one of the harder things to do. That said, the literature is not super clear because we don't have good studies like a large placebo controlled trial that is going to really differentiate that one micronutrient from others and also then look at the potential risks. So I think it is probably safe we don't really know. And that's why I kind of go back and forth and I let patients decide. 
and I would say probably less than half of our patients are actually taking it, but I'm certainly open to it. When it comes to dosing, most of the over-the-counter supplements sort of hit the same dosing mark, which is somewhere around 200, 300 milligrams. That seems to be consistent, and so I would argue probably safe based on the literature that we have. So that's all I have on strontium. I hope that helps to clear up some of the confusion around why there can be so many potential risks, but yet it seems to be so safe and why some people recommend it and some people are so against it. If you enjoyed this, please again, like, subscribe, sign up for notifications and share this with anybody that you think would benefit from the information. If you wanna learn more about how we manage osteoporosis or uh, about other tips and tricks that you can use, please sign up for our free masterclass, which should be in the description below. And lastly, I wanna hear from you. Please leave comments, ask questions, and let us know what topics you want to hear about osteoporosis and osteopenia. Thanks so much for making it to the end of this video. Thank <laughs> you.